flaming meatball is fired into Marine and I'm already starting to crack a stiffy from the action in this episode. Danny assesses the battlefield. Tyrion is like, I know it looks dodgy out there, but I have done a good job. Danny says, all right, well, let's get back to work. The fuckhead masters try to get Danny and her team to surrender. But yeah, nah, Drogon is like, that's not going to happen, dickheads. It's great to see that he's a team player now. Danny hasn't had time to install a seat with a cushion, but she finds a comfy spot and takes off to go barbecue the cunts that have been wrecking her city. Rhaegal and Viserion are like, oi, let us get in on some of the action. Even Dario's contribution is fucking awesome. Tyrion lets the masters know he's disappointed in their behaviour, so one of them has to die. Wormsy says, ah, fuck it, and kills two of them. Whoa, he's so hot right now. Meanwhile, over at Bastard Bowl, it's time for the weigh-ins. Everyone gets an opportunity to do some trash talking. There's Shaggy Dog's head, more trash talking, bear glare, bloody classic weigh-in. Davos says awesome Davos things. Although Jono has decent plans, Sansa chucks an Admiral Akbar and says, it's a trap. Tormund has a crack at taking Davos on when it comes to saying awesome things. I reckon it's a tiebreaker. Jono goes on a hunt for a pre-battle gobby. Not really. Sorry I said that. Melisandre lets Jono know that if one one the giant dies, she's happy to bring him back to life. I may be twisting the dialogue again. Out in the snow, Davos finds a toy that used to belong to his reading tutor. It's fucking burnt. Who could have done that? Yara and Theon have shown up after a big shit fight. They ask Danny and Tyrion if they want to start a new group. Danny says no worries. They kick things off by developing a secret handshake. Jono's rent an army of refugees is more or less ready for a fight. Ramsay makes Rickon work on his cardio while he fires arrows. Fuck's sake, Rickon, have you not seen Apocalypto? Zigzag, you dickhead. Oh, now Jono's riding out into the danger zone. Two Starks in the line of fire, and there goes one. Fuck, I didn't know you, but you were a good kid. Yeah, nah, why do you do this to me? Why do you do it? I guess he could get a few kills. Oh, there's Littlefinger's army. No, it's his regular army. It's an army, whatever. Now we have a fight. Jono is stuck in some kind of horse pinball machine. Come on, give him something to work with. There it is. Fuck yes. Now he's getting some runs on the board. Look behind you, mate. Look behind you. No worries. Get fucked, cunt. Ouch. Nah, I don't know about this. I don't know. I don't want to play anymore. So many dead wankers. Ah, oh, go on then, Davos. Fuck off, Umber. He's from Sleepy Hollow. I didn't think things could get worse, but now Jono's army is fucking surrounded. The giant needs to lift his game. Yes, that's good. Bit more of this. Oh no, the wildlings have had enough. They're running away. Crikey, now it's become worse than being in a mosh pit in a Limp Biscuit concert. <sighs> Fuck. Wait a sec, hold my calls. Torment gets a kill! The tide is turning and there's Littlefinger's army! I love Littlefinger! Oh yeah, nah, I always have. Him and Sansa are the new Gandalf. Jono gives Ramsay a Lyanna Mormont bear glare and the soft cock rides off. There's a foot chase. One one breaks through the doors of Winterfell. Unfortunately, he gets turned into a pin cushion. Finally, Jono makes it within punching distance of Ramsay and not his block off something chronic. Sansa finishes the job later that night by feeding him to his own hounds. Fuck yes, Sansa. Fuck yes, mate. Fuck Wowee, I think many of you have already predicted how massive my stiffy will be for this episode. It is a 10 out of 10 stiffy, absolutely throbbing. I fair dinkum enjoyed this episode from beginning to end. The show has a funny way of making you eat humble pie after you've criticised it. I was concerned last week that Tyrion was going to fall by the wayside with all his work undone after Danny's return, but the t 
teamwork in Marine was exceptional. I love how this scene wasn't a stressed out argument scene. Danny listened, Tyrion listened, they each did some speaking, and then they devised a plan of attack. I think Amelia Clarke is playing Daenerys with more maturity. In her solo coming of age story, she is well and truly entering adulthood. Tyrion got to personally deliver the justice to the masters for breaking his deal, which was great. We have two big personalities in Danny and Tyrion, so to keep the quality up in each character would be tricky, but it worked out really well this week. Team Targaryen has held its own in the game of plots. I I also like how we didn't have another Greyjoy travelling segue scene. Just BAM! There they are. No mucking around, more teamwork from Tyrion and Danny, wheeling and dealing, and the sexual chemistry between the ladies was off the fucking chain. I can roll with that. I can endorse this new group. But of course the main event was Bastard Bowl. Where do you even begin when it comes to reviewing this? It was fucking amazing. The whole battle for Winterfell is as good as any battle in a feature film. It was stressful, gruelling, emotional, suspenseful and all worth it in the end because Team Jono and Sansa got there. Jono literally crawled through shit and piss and mud and just got over the line. You can't ask for more than that. Besides the tones, cinematography, stunt work, visual effects. I love how on character it was as well. Ramsay's whole strategy was constructed from game playing. It was a brilliant performance. I'm glad we haven't had the character take up too much screen time before this episode. It wasn't needed. It would have diluted the performance. He's had enough development. You can tell E1, the actor, knows that time code is a valuable thing and he just milked the juiciest aspects of Ramsay. Gee whiz, I have also never been on Littlefinger's side so much. I was yelling for Littlefinger like every five minutes. I guess Santa really did have no choice but to crawl back to him. I'm still concerned about what he's gonna want though. I don't think it's so clear why Sansa never told Jono that she had an ace in the hole, but I suppose we may get a conversation about that in the next episode. This was predominantly a spectacle episode, which means that themes get put on the back burner, but you can say it's about being an underdog and vengeance. Bastards and women are the focus of the episode, and they can be seen as underdogs. Luckily, this was the episode in which they gained power, especially the Sheilas. Danny is moving closer to being the Queen of Westeros, and by working with Yara, she'll be making her the Queen of the Iron Islands. Sansa is the Queen of Winterfell again, without the need for her husband. The times they are a changing in the world of Westeros. Overall, give this episode all the Emmys, just give them all the Emmys, and someone give Kit Harrington that gobby already, say Man sends his regards. R.I.P. to Rickon, R.I.P. to One One the Giant, R.I.P. to Lord Umber, you cunt, and R.I.P. to Ramsay Bolton. Rest in peace in fuckwit city, mate. Yeah.